So we're going to go through how to name and write formulas for ionic compounds. I'm going to go through all the twists that you'll run into when you do that, and then at the end I'll go through some examples to kind of show how they apply. So first of all, you need to be able to recognize what you're looking for. So an ionic compound is going to occur whenever you're dealing with a metal paired up with a non-metal. A uh, fancy name for that, we would call that a binary compound, typically. So binary just means there's only two elements. So if you have a metal element and non-metal element, then the naming system is quite simple. You just name both of the elements, and the second one, you change the end of the name of it, from whatever it is, to IDE. So a simple one that you've seen before is, of course, NaCl. Uh, you would name sodium, you would name chlorine, but you would change chlorine to chloride. Okay. So example here, we have magnesium, we have bromine, we would name this magnesium bromide. Now, one of the themes here for naming is this. You're trying to communicate the minimal possible amount of information uh, as, as efficiently as possible. So it turns out that for these binary compounds, there's only one formula. So when you pair up magnesium and bromine into a compound form, the only formula will ever form is magnesium bromide, MgBr2, because it, it forms a compound where the charges are balanced. And magnesium ions have a two plus charge and bromide ions have a minus one charge. And it's not physically possible to have a situation where the total charge is not neutral. So you have to have twice as many bromides as you do magnesiums. And when you look at what the structure of these look like, you're looking at a case like this, where you'll have two different, two different ions, but it's not like, well, this would be sodium chloride. So in sodium chloride, you're not looking at a case where there's a sodium and a chloride bonded together to form a molecule, rather you're looking at this giant crystal where you have a whole bunch of sodiums and you have a whole bunch of chlorides and there's one of each compared to, compared to each other. So there's one sodium for each chloride. There's one sodium for each chloride, but it's not like these two are paired up. Rather, I mean, this, this chloride here is bonded to six different sodiums and one more here. Um, but it's a one-to-one -one ratio of the two, and that ratio is always going to be the same, and so therefore you don't need to give me a lot of information in that name. When you tell me it's composed of magnesium and bromine, I know what the formula is, I have enough information, and you're communicating with a chemist, and so therefore you don't need to say anything else. So like a lot of people want to say, oh, it's dibromine, so then you know there's two of them. But you don't need to say that because that's implicit once you know what the charges of these are. Now a couple twists. Sometimes instead of a, uh, an anion or a cation or, or both, uh, there'll be a polyatomic ion. So a polyatomic ion is when you have a group of things put together. So let's look at an example here. So we have bicarbonate as our polyatomic ion. So HCO3 and the whole thing has a minus one charge. So what this is, is it's a group of atoms that carry a net charge with them. So if we were to kind of draw a picture of this, we would have a hydrogen and an oxygen, three oxygens, and a carbon. So it's this group of particles, and then the whole thing has one additional electron somewhere in that midst. So however many, however much positive charge and negative charge there is normally, there's one additional electron in addition to all those, somewhere in that set of five particles. So a bicarbonate looks like this. So it turns out that this bicarbonate has a minus one charge. So if I start pairing this up with an aluminum and the aluminum has a three plus charge, I'm gonna need three groupings of this to balance out the charge of this one ion. So when I have aluminum bicarbonate, I have one aluminum for every three bicarbonates. Now for the naming, you do everything the same as what you would do up here. The only difference is you never change the name of a polyatomic ion when you're doing this naming system. So bicarbonate doesn't become bicarbonide, it just stays bicarbonate, okay? Um, usually the bigger challenge for this is writing the formulas as opposed to doing the rest of it. And then the, the second twist is that there are some cations that have multiple charges possible. So magnesium is always two plus when it's in its charge form, but iron can be iron two or iron three in terms of charge. So, Iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus are both relatively stable charges for iron particles. And what that means then is that if you give me a compound and you just told me iron chloride, I wouldn't know which of the two it is, iron 2 chloride or iron 3 chloride. So what we do for that is we just put Roman numerals of what the charge of the metal is in parentheses. Now, that's simple, but a lot of people will see this and you're learning a lot of stuff all at once. 
So they'll see a compound like this, iron chloride, and they'll see the three and they'll see the three and think, ah, the three means this. That's not the case. The three here is telling us that the iron is a three plus charge, which influences what this subscript will be. Now the chloride is a minus one charge, so I do need three minus one charges to counterbalance that, that positive charge. Uh, so when we get an example like this, a lot of people will make mistakes. So copper and oxygen, what you need to do to figure out the charge of the copper is you need to use the part that you do know. So we know from the periodic table that oxide forms a two minus charge. And since this is balanced with one of each, that means the copper must be two plus charged, and therefore it's copper two oxide. A lot of people write something like copper one oxide. Copper one oxide would look like this, where there's two copper plus one charges for every one two minus charge of the oxide. Now this is it, this is all your rules, but writing out the formulas can be challenging and takes a lot of practice, and you want to do some practice to kind of go through and figure out how to do it. So if you want to go ahead and, and pause the video here, I'm going to write the names of all the compounds on top, and then I'm going to write the formulas for all the compounds at the bottom. So if you want to try it yourself, go ahead and do that now, and then I'm going to put up the answers to them so you can kind of go through and see how you're doing. Alright, so the first one here, we just have a binary compound, magnesium and oxygen, so all we would do is name them. So we have magnesium then oxygen becomes oxide. Right. Here we have sodium and then we have a polyatomic ion. So if you ever see more than three element or more than two elements, you can probably you have a polyatomic ion. So we would just name them and then we're not going to change the ending. So sodium and chromate becomes sodium chromate. And then this next one here, we have lead and sulfide, but lead is something that has multiple possible charges. Lead can be 2 plus or 4 plus. So in this case, we need to look at what the charge of the sulfide is. From the periodic table, we get that that's 2 minus charge. And the lead, therefore, must be 2 plus charged. So we're going to put lead 2 sulfide. Oh, and just so you know, too, there is an alternate naming system that we used to use uh, where they use the Latin forms of these. So this would be plumbus. And when you have multiple charges and there's two, you use the us suffix for the smaller charge, and you use ic for the larger charge. So this would be plumbus sulfate. And if it had been PBS2, it would have been plumbic sulfate. Okay. Um, over here, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. So this looks like polyatomic ion and a polyatomic ion. So if you haven't memorized them, you have to look them up on an ion sheet. So this is ammonium. And then PO4 is phosphate. So that would be ammonium phosphate. And then here we have copper. Copper can have different charges. So we have copper, we've got to figure out the charge. We have a two minus charged oxide. So each copper here must be plus one charged. So this would be copper, Roman numeral one, oxide. Okay, now down here, we're gonna actually figure out what the formulas are. And this is usually a lot more challenging, but it's good to do both to kind of get hold of all the rules and how the two kind of interweave. So calcium and fluoride. So calcium, we need to look up what it's charged in the periodic table. It's in the second column, so it'd be a two plus charge. And then fluoride is in the 17th column with the halogens, so that would be a minus one charge. So we're going to need two fluorides for every one calcium in order to get this to charge balance. So our formula is going to be CaF2. What we're saying there is that we have two F minuses for every one Ca2 plus. Now note that we don't put the charges in the final formula, but they are still charged. Um, and then we got this from here. And you can always take the number here and move it here, and the number here and move it here and it will balance the charges. You just might have to reduce them sometimes. Uh, aluminum oxide. So if we look up aluminum, it is a three plus charge based on its column. And it's on the periodic table, oxygen is two minus. So our formula here, we would end up with two aluminums for every three oxygens. So that's two three plus charges, that's six plus. Three two minus charges, which is six minus. Okay. Uh, let's pick the color here. So tin two iodide, so tin two means tin two plus, so this would be stannous. And then iodide is I minus, so the formula here would be SNI2. Okay, and then let's get into some polyatomic ions. And down here we have potassium chlorate, potassium is K plus, and 
chlorate is a polyatomic ion ClO3 with a negative one charge. So plus and a minus are balanced, so our formula would just be KClO3. And our last one here, lead perchlorate, lead four. So lead four is PB4 plus, and perchlorate is ClO4 with a negative one charge. So I need four of these groupings. So it would be PB, ClO4, four. Okay. So as you do this, you'll probably make a bunch of mistakes, but as you start to do it more and more, you'll start to repeat and kind of figure out how to do it. Usually the best way to do this is just lots of practice and see if you got it right or wrong and make adjustments as you go. Um, be wary of not over applying the rules. So if you need Roman numerals when this is something with multiple charges. You don't if you don't. You don't need to say sodium one chromate. You would sound weird if you did that. Um, and then you know don't don't over apply and change the endings of polyatomic ions to IDE. But other than that, the ionic compounds aren't too much. It's usually when you mix in molecular and the acids that things start to get a little bit overwhelming for all the rules.